Uh, today we're going to continue on with our series on uh, the Kihon techniques of Kyokushin. So as you may know, I think Kihon is everything that you do that isn't the actual event. So all training is essentially Kihon or fundamental uh, drilling. It's funny you say that, Shian, just to jump in, because in physical preparation, uh, it's not common, but something through Ian King that we talk a lot about training is all training is non-specific except the actual event. Well, so go. it's so funny how you say that about Keon, mm. and Ian talks about that in training, like, oh, this is specific training. Now, is it the event? No, then it's not specific. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. how I feel. Yeah. You can't replicate the exact event. Yeah. All you can do is train the qualities that you need to optimize your performance in the actual event. Exactly, yeah. And I think that's why Kihon is so important. But it's also really important to look at the actual uh, way to use the Kihon. Uh, and today we're going to look at Uraken. So Uraken is Japanese for back fist, that part of the hand. Now, in I know that we do this, and I think it's important to do that. You bend the wrist. But from my experience, when you want to hit something really, really hard, with a back fist, there's none of this business. You would literally, unless of course you're snapping it to the face, I can see that it would work, where you're snapping it over the eyebrow. These are the, the, the good targets for Uraken is over the eye because you, you, you cut that skin and the bleeding will do the rest for you. Uh, the jintai, the nose, the chin, um, that's really the targets you're looking for here. But also in the body, uh, you have the solar plexus uh, and even there's opportunity if it depends on the situation where you could do a back fist in the groin. Well done. Okay, so let's go straight into it. I'm just going to, first of all, go run through some of the fundamentals uh, that we need. When we step into Sanchin, the first thing you need to remember is nothing goes outside. You never go, yoi, and do this sort of thing with your arms. You're coming up here or anything, okay? What you're doing is, as your knees come together, your elbows come together there. And that that actually is a really nice um, technique. I'll just show you briefly if Mitch was to grab my wrist. And if it's a really strong wrist, this two hands coming together here breaks it immediately. And look, there's your, sorry, there's your back fist. Okay, so it's interesting. Even the initial breakout where you actually go here like this, here like that, and you, you break it, you control it, and you have back fist. There, like that. There, and then you can follow that. I love following back fist with a palm heel. There's, it's either a back fist, palm heel, or a back fist, elbow. 100% knockout rate. I can tell you they work very, very well. <laughs> okay, so one, the knees and the elbows come together from there and you use the contraction, scapular retraction there to expand and contract through the body. Okay, the wrist, shoulder height, not fingertip shoulder height, because when you do that with the fingertip shoulder height, right now my fingertips are shoulder height. I open my hands, look, my hands are too low. Okay, but I bring, bring my wrist to shoulder height. Now when I open my hands, look, they're the correct height. I use the analogy of looking under, I call it, you say to the kids, I say, um, default position under the bridge, and they all get their hands come up. So you're looking under the hands, not over the hands. Okay, I think that's very important because that's as close to the cox comb as you need to be. And sometimes guys are so quick, you won't have time to get the hand up. It has to be up already. We have basically four back fists, Uraken Gamich, Sayuch, Hizuch, Okay, Uchi is a strike, so it means you're talking about impact, time, uh, impulse, time on target. You want the time on target to be as small as possible. Just like we spoke, said last week, it's like the time it takes to go from zero, uh, to, from uh, terminal velocity to zero when you hit the footpath is very small. But if you put a big two-story fireman's balloon there, you still go from terminal velocity to zero. You just do it over a long period of time. So the result is... Uh, less injury okay so it's that impulse that that explosive concussive time on impact that makes all the difference with the back fist if you just push the back fist through like this it's not going to affect anything okay so 
The first thing we look at, uraken gammen uch. The hands do not touch. Salsa was adamant about that because what happens is as you start to train, it's like a boxer when you're training and they get tired, they bring the gloves down and they rest their hands on each other. And once you do that, you have, you've completely lost your ability to react very sharply to any stimulus. Okay, so your hands never react, uh, press against each other because you get lazy and you literally use that as a prop. So you, I always say it's the thickness of a piece of paper between your hands. The hands are together, but they're not touching. Okay? Then we shoot the back fist out. Now remember, this rolling wrist makes a lot of sense to cut the face. But not when you do it like this. Roll the fist and pop it out. You see sometimes this is how it's taught, and it's completely wrong. What you need to do is talk the body, shoot the arm out, and then the fist snaps at the end of it. If you're going to get effect, that, that tearing effect on the face, it has to be a sharp technique. So when you're practicing it now in slow motion to start with, when you practice the uraken gammen, uraken gammen uch, face, hey, here's an interesting thing. We've spoken about this. I always say you don't hit the face, you hit the nose. You don't hit the nose, you hit the pimple at the tip of the nose. You don't hit the pimple, you hit the hair growing out of the middle of the pimple, in the middle of the nose, in the middle of the face. You don't hit the hair, you hit the split end on the hair in the middle of the pimple, in the middle of the nose, in the middle of the face. That way, if you miss a split hair, you still get the pimple. Miss the pimple, you still get the nose. Miss the nose, you still get the face. But if your target is your face and you miss the face, you get nothing. So remember, the finer the detail, the clearer the process. That's very important to zero in, zero in, zero in. When we talk about uraken, you have to be very accurate with where you're hitting. You're aiming for the eyebrow, the nose, the jintai, the chin. Of all of those, I think probably the jintai, the nose, and the eyebrow are the targets you should be aiming at, particularly when you do that back fist, because the uraken, gamuj, and sayuj are very similar. I'm here like this, there's my uraken, there's my sayuj. Uraken, okay, so it's just a matter of changing the angle of your body uh, that can affect the angle that you're actually striking the opponent. Okay, so I'm here like this. As I shoot out, watch, I don't roll the hand, I'll go this hand, I don't roll the hand and pop it out. I defy anyone to hurt someone doing that. When you, if you, you say to someone, let me, or even if you set up a target and go like that, you're not going to get anywhere near the effect as you would if. You roll, look, watch, I roll, bring my elbow forward and then snap at the end of that, like that. But that's the movement that you're doing, okay? The back fist there, and it's very concussive. I have to have my hands a little lower so I can see the camera, but in reality, you wouldn't see my face if I had it correct. So from the side, you can see it. But when I do it with the front so you can see my face, look, my hands are too low. I, I'm aware of that. But just be conscious of that. Okay? It's really important that as I do it, I don't kind of twist my head or anything. My head stays still. There's a lot of weight in the head. The more it moves around, the more you've got to bring it back to center to return to default position. Remember, everything has to come back to default. What's default? Under the bridge. Elbows under the hands, not outside of the hands. My head is in dominant position, straight. So it means as I move my body around, my head always stays exactly looking at my opponent. Well, when I do uraken, it's really important that as I use my body, I don't twist my head and let my head move around. I keep my head where it is on that exact point every time so that you get that twist. Okay, now, sayuj, two things to remember. One... The hands, once again, don't touch. The hands are close, but not touching. Two, you want them at the height that the hand is when you throw a normal punch. There's my chudan ski. I pull it back. There's the height of uraken. What that allows you to do is relax the shoulder and keep the waki closed. If I go too high, the nature of that is that I tense my shoulders too much. 
Okay, so I need to make sure that find the midpoint where the hiki te withdraws, bring them back. There's my line for uraken sayu uts. Sayu means left and right, literally it means. I know we say hidari migi, but in Japanese there's always more than one way to say the same word. And in Japanese, left and right or to the side is sayu, left, right, sayu, hidari. Another way of saying sayu uchi is hidari migi. But you can see why they cut it back from four syllables to two syllables, sayu. Okay, so we there. The next thing I need to remember is it's not an uraken gamen uts done to the side. So I'm not going here. By that, I mean you leave the elbow driving up, and depending on the range of your opponent, sometimes it's the elbow that does the work. If they come really close in, you just pop them with an elbow. But if you do the uraken sayuj correctly, you're leading with the elbow. There, like that. Okay, so I'm here, lead out with the elbow. Look out of the corner of your eye. Don't have to go like that. It's just using your peripheral vision. From there, looking over the side. Lead and out. Lead out. There. You use a twist of the body, roll the fist over. Twist of the body, roll the fist over. We'll go through some practical applications when we go through the four. So that's sayuj. Remember, the most important things are the hands are not touching. Because if you do that, you've got to undo that pressure created before you can actually snap the technique. The next thing is not too high. Don't bring them up here, which is what a lot of people do. Relax your shoulders. Remember, also I said 90% of all problems can be related to excessive tension in the shoulders. Relax the shoulders. Close the armpits. Waki. Salsa used to say all the time. Every session with Salsa, he would have said 50 times. Waki o shimete. Kata o rakushite. Waki o shimete. Waki o shimete. Close the armpit. Relax the shoulders. Okay, so when your hands are down here, you have that feeling of relaxation through the arms. There, there's your back fist. There, like that. Roll it through. Okay, next one is his oj. His oj is a spleen. Okay, so arguably you could say it's also to the liver, but the liver needs more of a penetration. So that's why when you hit the liver, you drive in. With a spleen, the spleen's under the heart. Okay, so it's a, a concussive sort of blow. So that's why. The back fist used to, it's called hisouchi or back fist to the spleen. Can I borrow you for a sec, Mitch? So the liver is on the right side of the body. The liver is one of the biggest organs, if not, well, it is pretty big, big next yeah. to the lungs, but it just hangs. The liver sits over the top of the stomach, okay? And it's got more than 2,000 functions. So it's the nerve endings in the liver are countless. So that's why when you hit it, you, you shock the system by getting a good liver shock. The spleen is a small sac, a gooey sac that sits under the heart, okay? So the penetration is slightly different. You won't get the same degree of penetration if you hit this side because there's no liver. But what you do have is the spleen under the heart, so that's why you get this back fist movement. Now, when you do hisouch, it just makes so much sense to me. Of course, hands not touching. Once again, they're not touching. Waki. Close, shoulders, relax. There's your position. It's not here. It's not here. Look, my arms are not at 180 degrees. My arms are at 90 degrees. There. So my arms are in. Not here like this, shooting out. My elbows are close to my body. My hands are actually form a 90 degree angle. There like that. So that when you hit, you hit with that explosive movement. And when you're doing makiwara, this is the main uraken technique you use to, to condition your hand is uraken hisouch. They're like that. The thing that I find is with this one, as opposed to the other back fists where you, there is good argument to flick the wrist into the eye, there is good argument here coming over the top. I'm going to flick that across the nose or the bridge of the nose or the eyebrow. But with this one, you're not. You're not doing this little flick at the end. Even though you may demonstrate it like that and there's nothing wrong with teaching it like that, in reality, if you're going to hit something strong, there is no point where I would be inclined to flick the wrist. I would just be going, using the whole body and the whole back fist there like that. Okay, so where is the back fist? There's the uraken. That's the back fist area right there. Okay, so when you hit, 
that's what you're hitting with into the spleen. Thanks. So we hit, my elbows stay close. It's not a long range technique. If you've got to hit something over there, what you're going to do is you're going to you kick them. Okay, it's a close range. See that? Close range technique. So when you teach, you want to make sure that the fists also used to say that the elbow is leaves the body no further than one fist width. See that? That's as far as the elbow goes. So when you do the techniques, they're like that. It's the whole body doing the job. And then it returns underneath, underneath, underneath. And you sometimes don't get too pedantic about going like this because that's just an arm motion. When you do it with power and with force, you're going to build, get the build up of the body. So I like to actually bring my hand up here and unwind it, unwind it. <laughs> See, like that, you get this little bit of a, a pull and down. Of course, to get students do, doing the correct technique in the early stages, have them relaxed a little bit and think of that speed motion, okay? As they get up to about green belt, yellow belt actually, where they start to put a little mental volition into what they're doing, then you can start to get them to, without breaking the fundamental rules of movement, start to get that explosive, that hand coming up a little bit there like that to get more power in the technique. Okay, the last one, Moashiuch. It's a double movement. One, hand behind, hand around. You pull the hickey tear and unwind. I um, also said you always finish it in line with your, your midpoint, and you pull it up about a fist off. Except I remember once I got so enthusiastic, I back fisted myself and I <laughs> split myself open. He had to get a couple of stitches. Really? <laughs> <laughs> that worked. Okay, so don't get too enthusiastic. The fist comes around. Look, it's there's Seiken uh, Mawashiuch, uh, which is more like that, okay, which is a little bit like when you do these movements in the kata, okay, that's more a seiken mawashiuch. But uraken means that you are hitting with the back fist like that. So from the side, the hand comes out and then pops into the midline. Wraps, large circle, and in. Wraps, large circle, in. See that movement? Look, big, 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 and it comes into the center, the center point. One. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two. See, like that. Large motion in. With the body in. With. Okay, now this is one of my favorite techniques for um, a real situation, simply because it's kind of deceptive. If you combine that with the Udaken, you may have seen the video of Solsai doing this on YouTube, where he, he lines up, and it's so deceptive because I can come here and look, I move my head that way, sure. and that's what happens. Okay? Bang. And then you come, sorry, and you come back in with Udaken, his uh, uch to the side. So I'm here, knock the hands down, there, bang. If that one gets some great, if it doesn't, I come straight back with the uh, his uch. And because of the nature of the that that spinning motion, you can re it's really, really effective. And the other thing, too, is in a situation where most people are expecting techniques to come straight like a boxer. Okay, he throws the punch at me. The head goes there, but the fist comes in the opposite direction. So not unlike a boxer's overhand right, where the, the overhand right, well, they'll, they'll do the overhand right like that, which is probably the most powerful punch in boxing, arguably. But it's a similar sort of thing. I'm going to come here, knock it down, and then come back to there. So Moashi Uchi, you think, well, there's no real practical application. I think it's one of the most underrated techniques because you're just there, you knock the hands down, and you can come around like that. Okay, so they're the four fundamental uh, Uraken techniques. How do we make them practical? Well, for a start, one of the best ways to make them practical is the knockdown technique. They're like that. See that? So I shape up, I'm here like this, and I'm kind of doing this movement. So we've done it before where we come in here because I want to get my head on the chest, my arm down here, and I'm going to take them down with a single leg. So I'm there like that. Boom. I head up them on the chest or the jaw, but I grab the leg and take them down. Another way is maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I don't want to take them down. 
So what I can do is instead of doing both hands at once, what I do is I'll do it slowly first. I'm going one, two, three. One, two, three. So when I see, there, that sort of movement. Like that, and then follow up the palm heel just like I did before. And then you can follow in with a, another back fist. There, like that, and there, around. That's quick. Bang, <laughs> bang, bang, bang. There, like that. So it's a lot of practicality in it because it allows you to move your head. So if he throws a punch at me, I move my head. If I leave my head there now, what's he going to do? He's just going to punch me. Okay, so I've got to keep my head moving. So he throws a punch, boom, boom, bang, and then I'm moving my head with these back fists all the time. So the punch comes, boom, bang, boom, boom, bang. There's the back fists, and they come at funky, awkward angles. Yeah, they kind of throw you off. So one, two, there like that, or even just there, one, this sort of move, movement with the back fist, there. My friend Tony Quinn hit me with this once. It was so fast that I just literally felt it. I didn't see it. It was just like a machine gun. And back, there. And back. back fist like that. And back fist, palm heel. And back. back fist, palm heel. And then another palm heel or a back fist there as well. They're good, really practical uh, combinations. What about spinning back fish? Yeah, spinning back kicks, uh, spinning back fist, spinning back elbows work a trick. I'm here like this, especially they throw a thigh kick. Oh, oh man, your thigh kicks are good. Oh, dude, so good. They throw them only like whack. And they're right in range for a back fist. Spin back fists work because they just sort their own range out. From my experience, if I'm here, boom, see that? I'm in this funky range. Because my body's moving that way, the timing's different. It just it sorts its own distance out. So it works very well. There, like that. Another one I used to, I've used a lot in Kumite, especially, is I'll come in here and they start to work my body and I'll cover my body up. And then from this range, bang, spin back elbow works a treat as well. Or spin back, boom, there, crack down on top. Is a, a dream come true? Or if you know they're a runner, the runner, there's runners and jammers. If someone jams into me like that, the spin back elbow pops them like that. But if they're a runner, the spin back fist catches them every time. Okay, so there's some really nice little practical ways that you can use that, uh, the Udaken techniques in your training. They're yeah. very fast. And the second thing is your feet when you do them as well. You know, you talk about loading the leg you're punching on. Yes. That, when you're doing them, I'm watching you do all of them, and the foot, the, the leg that's the same side as a hand technique, you're putting weight in that and you're generating realize, so much yes. from your feet, from your hips, just your body's doing the movement and the arm's just an appendage, essentially, it feels like, or yes. looks like. Yeah. Paul asked a good question. Does spinning Uraken have any advantage over spinning Tetsui? No, otherwise, other than the angle of the elbow. I tell you one, the only thing I can think of, Paul, is from my experience, Tetsui, spin Tetsui puts your elbow at more of a risk because if you watch here if let's just say for, for the sake of it he has that arm and i spoke i spin the tetsui my elbow hits and i tweak my elbow because it's in line with the little finger if you want to tweak an elbow always tweak it in line with the shuto in line with the uraken there okay so if i come around and i and i hit a bank i'll tweak my elbow but if it's a back fist, that angle is wrong. He has no effect on my elbow whatsoever. So for a spin tetsui, elbow danger, bang. See that? You can see it tweaks my elbow. For a spin uraken, it doesn't. Even if he blocks it, it's not going to hurt my elbow. Okay, so that's the only difference. Otherwise, the technique, uh, tetsui is a, a, a really good technique. I'd say uraken is one of the fastest. You know, I mean, even to the point where I think boxers tend to do a, 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 a peekaboo style, a peekaboo style from a boxer where they throw the jab, it's actually a back fist. So one of the fastest ways to throw a punch at someone is you pop. See that? A fake and a feint. A feint's off the shoulder, a fake's off the technique. If you want to get a quick back fist, you just leave with the elbow and you, the hand just follows like that. It's, it's much quicker than lining up the jab seems quicker yeah so <laughs> pop with the elbow see that and it, it's quite fast yeah so 
Yeah, yeah, I think it is pretty fast. That's a good point. Um, it's certainly, if I ever wanted to do a fast jab, I actually find myself doing a fast back fist instead. Well, it's Pavel, did you get a book yet? <laughs> As you may know, the Polish version of the book is available. Yes, I think Uraki Mawashi is, is, uh, is exactly right, Shian Mac. You're true. Is the angle of the elbow why Uraken seems faster than Tetsu? Yes, it is. Because uh, because the the not just the angle of the elbow, but the biology, the, the chain of muscles, because the elbow is down, so the waki is slightly closed, which allows your body to do more work. But if I go Tetsui, look, I need to lift my elbow a little more. I think it, it's also a lever length biomechanical lever length issue as well. Cause if you're doing, um, you rock and the, the lever is shorter, so it can be faster, but if you're doing Tetsui, you're extending the elbow more. So the lever is longer from the body. So it takes short, longer. It takes longer. So longer lever, longer time. Yeah. Yeah. People say no head strikes. Nah. Yeah. No, nah. no. Nah. Plenty of head strikes and Kyokushin. If that's a, if that's a, a technique that's legal in Kyokushin and that's a technique that's not illegal, What's the difference? The only difference is the width of a fist. Okay, so in terms of being able to do head strikes, it's not the problem. That's for sure. Movement, head movement's a problem, but definitely not um, uh, being able to hit in the head. If you can knock someone out by hitting them in the chest, you can definitely knock them out by hitting the head. Ronan, yeah, Tony Quinn had some great training sessions with him. One of the most effective, uh, I think, gifted effective, explosive martial artist that Australia's ever seen, um, but a real quiet achiever. Could, I could do a whole session just on Tony Quinn alone. He's uh, definitely one of my great inspirations. Uh, so there you have it, guy. They're the four Uraken. Uraken, Gammen, which Uraken means, literally means the back of the Ura Omote in Japanese. Ura Omote, behind and in front, the back or the behind side of the fist, Uraken. Seiken, Uraken. Okay, so uraken, back fist. Gammen uch, gammen is the face. Remember, don't hit the face. You hit the split hair in the middle of the pimple, in the middle of the nose, in the middle of the face. Be really, really clear about fine detail. Makes such a big difference. Sayuch, remember, not too high. Relax your shoulders, close the waki. There's your height. Kizuch, same thing. Relax the shoulders so you get the explosiveness through the body. And mawashi uch. Rip it around and bring it back to the center line. Okay, they're the keys because also I said that the power punch starts on the ground through your legs, through the hara, through the waki, through the elbow. And so when Salso would do a punch, he literally he's, he would be using the lat like to, pull the, to pull the arm in. in yeah. yeah, and the back fist is the same too. Boom, like that. It's interesting to set it up. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Next week we'll continue on with our Kihon series. We're going to do all thirty techniques or at least as far as my body will allow us to do it, at which point Mitch will have to take over. But anyway, us, good to see you all, and I uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Don't forget, I always forget, but don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, please just click subscribe or click, click like. Uh, we're starting to get a nice build on, but uh, we still haven't reached 2 million yet. Won't be long. But anyway, click subscribe, click like, click the little bell and pass the word around. You can just right click on the screen, copy the uh, address and send it to your mates. Appreciate that very much. Us guys, thank you very much. Thanks Mitch, us.